Now take the old track bar bracket off to put the new one on. They didn't send us a new track bar bracket or a pitman arm. So it's supposed to be here at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Let's set it to powder and hope it gets back soon enough. All right, guys, Billy at Two Bros here, tuning in this week weekly episode. Uh, sorry, it's not Mac or I have not been on camera a whole, whole lot last last uh, little bit, but been busy uh, trying to get caught up and way way behind. Uh, we've got a very wide variety of things going this week. We've got classic, exotic, supercar, paintwork on my personal truck, big jeeps, big trucks. We got a little bit of everything. Uh, shout out to the guys at Southern Powder Coating. Just got this thing back. They did our paintwork. Again, my personal 2022 Limited F250 Striker, hoping to have a Kyle over there, hoping to have the kit uh, back to us next week on that. We'll send it back up to Southern Powder Coating to get the uh, get it powder coated, obviously. Hopefully in the next few weeks we'll get that, get that going. So we've got some big projects going. Can't uh, thank you guys enough for the support. Been extremely, extremely busy this week, uh, which is kind of odd. This time of year we're usually a little quiet, you know, July and August, but been crazy busy, way behind people, all of our guys, can't thank those guys enough. It's been extremely hot out here and pulling 12, 15 hour days. So shout out to those guys. Uh, check some of this stuff out. We've, we've got some pretty wide variety of stuff going on this week. So uh, check it out. Let us know what you think. Drop us a comment. doing three link on it and I take the old track bar bracket off to put the new one on they didn't send us a new track bar bracket or a pitman arm so it's supposed to be here at 10 a.m. tomorrow let's set it to powder and hope it gets back soon enough I'm gonna do what I can for now until I have to have that track bar bracket I'm gonna do the sway bar drop and I'm gonna do the new steering stabilizer and see what we can figure out uh, you got a track bar bracket for a five and a half inch lift? Track bar bracket for a five and a half inch lift? <laughs> well, so they were supposed to send us one and they didn't. So now we gotta wait till tomorrow to get it and still send it to powder. We gotta push it? Yep. Push this thing. Yeah, it don't got no park. That's park. It don't got no park. Yeah, I've already got the three length, the pulls, the shocks, that under piece. I was just now taking off the steering stabilizer and doing the sway bar brackets. Not cool. I'll get whatever I can done today and see how far I can get and figure something out for the rear. Cool. You must have been jamming that up in there like a, like a, like a clip. Yeah, like a clock. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Dang tool people. Always got problems. There's your raffle ticket. Thank you. This one's going to win. Hey, I'm the only box in here that's got wheel lights and rock lights and underglow.
Well, yesterday we got the front finished up, or this morning we got the final parts in at 10 a.m. from PMF. They were fast on shipping, got them next day in the morning, so that was good. Got that finished up, new brake lines on, pitman arm, the track bar bracket drop. And so now we're moving on to the rear. I've got the U-bolts out already, rear blocks. And these are PMF's blocks that they use, they're lifted blocks. You'll see up here they got all these holes in them. And what this does, is it can, you can center your axle with it. So usually, most lift blocks only have this middle hole in it, and it would line it up and it would move your axle forward with the lift. Well with these, you put it on this one hole back and it'll center your axle up in the fender well, which is a great design and PMF is the only people that I've seen that do this, so it's great. They also have this bump stop extender up here. Your factory blocks have this as well, but when you put a lifted one in, it has to be moved up to compensate for the lift. So these are great blocks by PMF. So to go with that block movement that I just told you about with the different uh, pinholes, this is your top piece that goes on top of the leaf springs and these other holes to go on top of the centering pin accounts for that movement of the block. So we're gonna put it in this back one and account for it. We got the lift kit done, three link PMF kit, alien silver powder coated, dual steering stabilizer by PMF, got the rear done, and we got rear PMF traction bars done, Fox shocks, reservoirs, got all those mounted, everything done with that. Still waiting on the bumper to get back from paint and getting it paint matched. And we've still got to put the new wheels on in the front, 26 by 14s in the front, and waiting on alignment and it'll be done. So, won't make it for this week, but Y'all see it. <laughs> We're doing a rig here, going from factory to 513s. It's going with a set of 40 inch tires, so it's time to re-gear it and get a little bit better drivability back. the uh, disconnect for your front differential. Uh, it's actually a two-piece axle. It's got an actuator in here with a slide lock, so it'll lock both axles in the front end. Sometimes these caps aren't marked from side to side. Uh, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. So I just wrote a casting number down off of this one to be sure I put it back on the next side. Whenever gear sets are manufactured, they'll have big dings in them uh, and they'll have raised edges. And what we're doing is making sure everything's true and flat so it sits down on the carrier good and flat and you don't have a bad run out problem or something that'll cause issues later on down the road.
checking the rotational force of the pinion. Whenever you set your pinion bearing preload, you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. We use this torque wrench to check the rotational drag in inch pounds. Put all this in here and try not to lose your fingertips. And get all the shims in there and everything else all at one time. So. Trying to get this dial indicator set up so I can check backlash and the way the teeth are cut. It's really hard to get a good flat spot to get to. Uh, the specification is six to ten thousandths on these gears. Right at the bottom end, it's right at six. So we'll check our pattern and see what it looks like and go from there. I'm probably gonna have to make a pinion shim change to get the pattern right. Put a thinner shim in it and back the pinion out of the gear and go from there. All right, so here is the finished product on this 2022 uh, Mojave JT Gladiator. This thing turned out absolutely like just sick. It's, it's amazing. Uh, pictures and video, it really doesn't do it justice to how big this thing is. I'm six foot tall, six one. This thing, it, it's huge. 40 inch tires. Toyo, uh, we did the 40, 13, 50, 17 Toyo Open Country MT, KMC Machete Beadlocks. This is such a good looking wheel. The polished finish, you know, it really complements the color of the Jeep. Uh, we did six inch vertex lift from Rough Country. It's got the uh, really nice vertex shocks, eight way adjustable. We'll get some good shots of those in here. Uh, rock slide engineering power steps on this bad boy. You definitely need them. These things are super slick. They also look cool on the Jeeps. They look a little bit better than like your basic amp research. Really nice setup there. Uh, up front, we added the Mopar official three-piece bumper. This bumper's pretty cool. It's uh, designed to be ran as a stubby or a full width. We've got it in a stubby configuration. We powder coated this orange to match the uh, rest of the Mojave accents. 12,000 pound winch from Rough Country. Uh, if you look under the Jeep or cut back later in the video, uh, you see Matt doing some gears. We went with uh, 513 Yukon gears um, just to get this bad boy, you know, up to speed, kind of put it back to where it needs to be. That's something that's really important, you know, when you're putting larger tires. Uh, to optimize your fuel mileage, the performance of the vehicle, less strain on the vehicle, everything like that. Uh, it drives out really nice with the 513 gears. You know, just gets it back to where it needs to be to keep the fuel mileage and performance. I think that pretty well covers everything. You know, one thing I want to point out on this Jeep, it's a good customer of ours, good buddy of mine, Shane. Uh, thanks to him, he's let us do tons and tons of vehicles. We started talking about this thing on like a Wednesday afternoon. By Thursday, we had a game plan together. He's like, I'm going out of town next week. I'm gonna leave it with you. So we, we got this thing together quick. Uh, we were luckily you know, able to source and find parts. The, the guys at the shop, man, they, they knocked it out. This thing wasn't even really scheduled, but while he was out of town, long story short, we made the whole build happen. Uh, just, you know, pulled together as a team. And I'm, you know, really impressed by that. I can't say enough good things about the guys. They did a great job. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Turned out sick. Let us know what you think.
All right, so that pretty well sums up today's episode. Uh, as always, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for sharing, commenting, all that good stuff. Uh, don't forget, drop a comment below, and we appreciate you watching. See you next week.